So, if I'm drawing a head or face, I try to do this more and more as the years go on. It's kind of just practice getting a general skeleton. Um, kind of like guidelines of uh, where I want everything. Um, that's, I think that's the trickiest thing with getting faces to look the way you want them to. Um, so it's a matter of just mapping everything out. Uh, and one of the best ways that I've noticed to practice that is what um, what I like to call and what I've heard, uh, you know, in my years of doing this is it's called the searching line. Um, the searching line essentially is 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 based in gestural drawing. Um, to where you just start sketching, you just start sketching whatever. Uh, you kind of pick, like in this instance, I'm picking a face, so I'm just going to just sketch the face. But a prime example of the searching line would be something like this. So in this instance, like I said, let's say I want to draw a face. So you know, we all know, a face has two eyes, a nose, a mouth, ears, etc. So let's see here. The searching line is I'm constantly drawing, rarely picking my pencil up, you know, off, off of the paper to kind of get a general idea of, of those objects or those elements in the, in the drawing. So you are searching for those shapes. Um, this is something that I've been messing around with for a long time, just because I'm really obsessed with the human face. We, we see it, you know, all the time, and reading someone's face, you can, uh, you know, understand their emotions, say, I heard somewhere like 80 to like 90% of our verbal communication skills, or just, you know, communication skills in general are, um, are nonverbal. Facial expressions, hand gestures, things of that nature. So yeah, this is kind of like an intro into gesture, like searching line drawing. Um, like again, you know, like I said, uh, Zhao Gometti, Alberto Zhao Gometti is one of my favorite artists that I really saw starting to do this and really, really embrace it. Um, getting back to this, um, <clears throat> it's really nice to be able to use the, you know, this like blue, like color Eno pencil, uh, cause it doesn't, when you scan it into your computer, it doesn't show up that way. It doesn't show up as much. It will, but not as much. The other thing that I'm still learning on is, uh, hair, uh, how to render it and the, you know, the shape and how it fits on the head. You know, I've had in instances where it's been really successful, but it's a matter of muscle memory and, and visual memory on, on how it actually works. So, um, more often than not, I will draw figures without hair because I'm still learning. But also, uh, I, it, it creates a sense of ambiguity um, in what I like to do within my drawings. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, just pull out a pen and, and just quickly um, ink this just to kind of give you guys an idea of, you know, a little better idea of what, what we got going on here. So, yeah, I'll, I would, you know, sketch something like this with the blue pen and then slowly pick and choose the lines that I really, I like. kind of get it to a more completed state. You 
you know, I'm doing this fairly quickly as well, just for time's sake and the amount of space that I have on my device. I'm going to add a couple extra lines in here to make it kind of, make him look like he's dazed, like that snake in Jungle Book. Hope you know what I'm talking about. Not the Disney remake where they have to make everything live action nowadays. Or semi-live action with, you know, crazy computer graphics. No disrespect to the people who got to work on that kind of thing, but I'm ready for uh, Disney to put out original work. I think a lot of people are. So, just a rough kind of thing here. And, you know, I can come in and it, it's uh it acts as, the blue pencil acts as a skeleton, you know. So there's a rough, rough idea.